stack kid. We asked Anastasia Spencer about how her family keeps its laundry clean. My husband's always getting his clothes filthy. Look at these stains. Vomit, blood, dog shit from passing out in the park. What'll the neighbors think? So what do you do, Anastasia Spencer? Do nothing. I don't do freaking laundry. I get by on my good looks. Hey, hey, you can't fucking lie on television. How would you like to try El Presidente laundry detergent for one week? For free. Tell you what, we'll come to your house and do your laundry for you. Look at them now. They're cleaner than when I got them at the Goodwill. Is this voiceover asshole gonna follow us everywhere now? Getting so I can't even use the bathroom anymore. We asked Percy Spencer which brand of sensitive two-ply bathroom tissue helps him stay dry. Do you mind, bastard? I'm trying to lay cable. Come on, baby, give me some sugar. I don't feel like it. Periodic penile problems, Percy? Fuck off and leave us alone already. Viagra can help deal with those flaccid bouts of frustrating erectile dysfunction. Why don't you just turn it off? The voice will go away if you turn off the TV. Well, now you're just talking crazy. Maybe something else is on. Dreamland's Cable in the Classroom presents Pop Soda's Delicious Science Student Achievers. Yes, the students at Generic Public School have gone out of this world, and we don't mean they're high on crack. No, they've created a realistic Mars base right in their classroom. Let's join Miss Calhoun for more. Our entire eighth grade supplemental education class is so proud. They worked for a week to create this Mars base and... <laughs> I'm not sure they'll need a bartender in space, young man. She's been living in a dreamland. I've been in space plenty of time. Quantum space, interdimensional space, handicapped parking space. Every one of them had some sort of bartender nearby. Kevin Spencer, space bartender. The first person to bring costume to aliens. And... Thanks to the fine people at Dreamland Cable, we've connected a live internet hookup with handicapped children in Finland. Now we can exchange data. Kevin asked what kids in Finland had to do with a Mars probe. About as much as a bartender in space, you trailer troll. Today's Science Achievers were brought to you by Pop Soda. It won't change the color of your stool anymore. Kevin was excited to show his parents his first project, for which he'd ever received a respectable passing grade. <laughs> Way to go, Rugrat. Let me see that paper. Oh, wait a minute, I get it. You hand me some cock and bull story, and next thing I know, you're serving me some subpoena. Nice try. Hey, look what I learned to do today. I noticed that if you push the buttons on the telephone the right way, you can play a tune. Listen. Recognize that? It's Purple Haze. Hello? <laughs> Who is this? Why do you keep calling me? <laughs> Finally, I can be a famous rock star and tear one off with all them groupies. Think I'm getting a cold. Got any menthol? Why's the fucking line been busy for three hours? I've been writing a thong. Listen. Knock it off. A stupid fucking bat. What the fuck is wrong with you? Cut off fucking. Give you a fucking. You got me. 
What are you bawling about? I'm trapped in an all-night adult theater. I think... I think I've been sleepwalking again. And I'm naked. Holy shit. Stuck naked downtown. Well, don't worry. Hang tight. Me and the boy will get your first thing tomorrow afternoon. What? Well, come down now. I just took my shoes off. I'll catch you later. <laughs> If she's so naked, where is she getting all them quarters for the phone? Nice of you to pick me up, asshole. I was on my way to the dragway. Here, I brought something for you to wear. A tablecloth? I'm not carrying a bunch of girly clothes around like some fruitcake. Just get me home. You bet, right after the drag races. Charlie's got a funny car he built himself, and he let the boy do the paint job. It's awesome, with skulls and dead people. No sponsors yet, but plenty of booty. Kevin was filled with anticipation to see his artistic achievements rocketing down the jet funny car drag strip. He wasn't as excited to have his naked mother wrapped in a tablecloth in a cramped overheated car. It was a layer cake of unfortunate Freudian imagery and body odor, and Kevin wanted out. So what's the deal with all the sleepwalking? I've been sleepwalking all kinds of crazy places. Last week, I woke up and I actually had a job. Oh shit, maybe you better get your head checked at the nut house, uh, a hospital. Hmm. Hey, gang, thanks for coming out. Uh, your boy sure did a great paint job on my car. Yes, you don't see Trudeau on a funny car that often. Real patriotic. Kevin worked very hard on the intricate artwork on Charlie's car. In fact, he gave painstaking attention to almost every detail, except properly closing the hood latch. Charlie, I caught your wallet. I put it in a bucket with your arm. Oh, thanks, buddy. Sacrifice. <laughs> what in Christ are you doing? What the? You were joking me, you fucking skag. Oh, I, uh, I must have been doing it in my sleep again. Hey, wait a minute. Don't you know you're not supposed to wake someone up when they're sleepwalking? That's a fucking bullshit rumor. You could have killed me. <laughs> holy, holy shit, you're asleep again. No, I'm not. I just want you to pay attention, because I'm going to a specialist, just as soon as a healthcare can take me. The hospital suggested that the whole family come in for a sleep study to see if they could find anything in their sleep patterns that might be causing Anastasia's problems. Did you abstain from alcohol, like I asked? Yeah, I've been sober for three days. Me and the boy only been drinking light beer, and no name cough syrup, too. Okay, then you'll notice something unusual. You'll start dreaming again. What's that? I ain't had a dream I remembered in years. As your substance abuse wears off, you'll notice something called REM rebound. You'll have very lucid, powerful dreams as your brain becomes aware that it's sober again. Now I want you all to sleep well, and we'll see if anything unusual occurs. Good night. Thanks for slamming the door. How are we supposed to sleep with all this shit in our head? What do you think, baby? Mr. Spencer, 
Any sexual activity can disrupt the reading. Fine, I'll just stay in bed then. Any sexual activity, Mr. Spencer? I wasn't doing nothing. These are infrared cameras, Mr. Spencer. Your groin is a red, hot, flaming wad. <laughs> you ain't kidding. Wait till the booth starts to kick in. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> So far, the only problem has been Mr. Spencer's night terrors. <laughs> Look at all the funny monkeys. Uh, Mrs. Spencer, you're about to take part in an exciting experiment. <laughs> Why is that monkey carrying a big axe? I'm from the Federal Bureau of Fun. I don't think you're enjoying yourself enough. Uh, why not try our little secret device to help you enjoy yourself? So, uh, what's up, Doc? Well, we noticed Mr. Spencer suffered from severe night terrors. Holy shit, I knew I shouldn't have switched the light beer. I'm going back to self-medicating. <laughs> but I'm afraid, Mrs. Spencer, your study didn't show any significant somnambulistic situations. I had a bunch of weird dreams. All about the time when my dad sent me to the mental hospital. <laughs> you told me about that. Your dad said you were a big old whore and you had to be institutionalized. Can you believe she actually told me she was a virgin when she met me? You told me you was in the army! Boy, our relationship is sure based on a lot of bullshit. Mrs. Spencer, your problem may have a psychological basis. I'll be referring you to a therapist. The grandparents are not expected to live. And now, on a serious note. A bizarre crime spree has been affecting a specific group of local sportsmen. We go now to Scott on the spot. Hey, Ma, come see. Charlie's on the idiot box. Today, jet funny cars aren't so very funny anymore. In fact, they're very depressing. A thief has made these brave dare demons cry big sissy tears because a culprit has been stealing their thunder. Someone broke into the garage and stole all the jet engines for our funny cars! My insurance is gonna kill me! Legally, I'm not even supposed to be driving! Oops! Ah! There goes Lefty again! And a rash of murders in the community is making police scratch their heads. No clues or leads or ideas amongst our uninspired criminal law enforcement. Hey, boy, you've been ripping off all them funny car motors, ain't ya? Well, you're cutting Daddy in on the deal, you little snotwad. Show me where they are. I got connections who can sell them out of country. Okay, so where's the engines, you little? Holy shit. So you finally done it. You finally built your own rocket ship, just like you're always bitching about. Hey, you'll be the first Canadian in space. Kevin pointed out that there'd already been plenty of Canadians in space. Yeah, and my nuts are just hairy strawberries. Let's check out the upholstery, Buck Rogers. This might make a sweet little bootlegging shack. Suppose this button's supposed to make it fly.
So, Mrs. Spencer, from your reference I'm told that you've been suffering from sleep disorders? Well, we're gonna take you through a rigorous regimen of gestalt, scream, and various other forms of therapy to... Hmm, I don't remember leaving that window open. Ah! Ah! Uh, hide! Hide my porn! Is this part of the therapy? I have the target. We'll reconvene at Base Point Delta. So, you think you can write anything you want in the newspapers? Well, you're gonna print a retraction tomorrow, or you're gonna have an accident. What are you talking about? I don't write for no newspapers. You don't? I think I got yours. Let's trade. Your anesthesia, Spencer? Well, we have to talk. Wow, this is like that show where that gorgeous chick is a spy? You know the one? Where the guy has a phone in his shoe? Where's the beer fridge in this piece of shit? Kevin tried to explain to Percy that they were in real trouble because they might not be able to escape planetary gravity with its fat ass on board. You calling me a fat ass? But I, this thing ain't such hot shit. None of the TVs even get sports channel. I wonder what alien planet we landed on, boy. Maybe one with all kind of chicks like in those old movies they're always showing on the neighbor's cable. Well, I guess we better go open up the old diplomatic relations between our two worlds. Kevin and Percy didn't realize that they'd landed in Vulcan, Alberta, which is a hotbed of science fiction convention freaks. So they weren't surprised by the bizarre alien life forms they saw. Moo cow owl poop. That is our traditional greeting. Welcome to Space Bowl 2003. Your recreated rocket ship is a very impressive effort. Yeah, I worked real hard. The boy helped a bit, but it was mostly me. Come with us to enjoy the most spectacular convention in the universe. So, Mrs. Spencer, we meet again. Who the fuck are you? God, your brain is that shot. I've dealt with you at least three times. When you were kidnapped? I never heard of you. Mrs. Spencer, I believe I can shed a little light on your sleep problems. In the 1960s, the American government was experimenting with LSD in Montreal psychiatric hospitals. The same one you were staying at. Yeah, I remember that. It was pretty good shit, too. Yes. Except we then trained you to be a hired killer. An assassin. You're the one who's been murdering government officials. What are you, nuts? I couldn't wait on my way out of a wet paper bag! It's all very easy to understand. You see, it was just after the Cold War, and fear gripped America from all quarters. Oh, Christ, how long is this gonna take? This must be where all the other space aliens meet to talk about shit. Hey, look at those sorry old fuckers. How's it going, fellas? We're from planet Earth. Clunk, spickling, welcome to copter. What? These guys all sound like the retards in my literacy class. He said you looked familiar. Were you at Space Bowl 99? Uh-huh. What about Spacecom 74? I've got you all beat. I was at the original Space Trek Convention Ball 68. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, well, I had a girlfriend once. Gee, bastard. Time to go. Brent Spiner is going to make another speech about how much he hates being a rich TV celebrity. Ooh, I love him. 
Is he the one who paints? Kevin thought all the space travelers were real depressing, so he decided on a plan. Because if there's one thing he'd learned from years of beer commercials, alcoholism is the panacea for cultural boredom throughout the known universe. Boy, I bet you could tuck your way into a lot of trouble with a blower like that. Excuse me, is this your Martian bar? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. I thought of it myself and everything. I represent the candy company that owns the copyright to the name Mars Bar. You'll have to close down this establishment. Besides, there's no smoking here. Why? Why? Why you say in space no one will let you smoke? It's showtime, fucker! <sighs> Why does this happen every year? Because they're idiots, Frank. Neurotic, eccentric, pathetic idiots. Come on, let's bash some alien rubber. I've set my laser to stand! Yeah, and we've set our tasers on. Shut the fuck up! And of course, under Castro's Cuba, Nixon couldn't take any chances. <laughs> Yeah, listen, I know we're not supposed to be here, but can we join our fight team with your fight team? I can use some help with these friggin' aliens. Sure thing, sweetheart. It's all probably a dream anyways. From that day on, Anastasia promised to only go to bed drunk for the rest of her life so she'd be too uncoordinated to do any damage to anyone. It's a sacrifice! But I make it for my family! Yes, you, Anastasia Spencer, are this week's Pop Soda Delicious Science Achiever. Nothing wrong with that kid. Yeah, and we've set our tasers on. Shut the fuck up! You'd better not cross his path! <laughs> <laughs>